breaking news alert from Mid Michigan Now. Good morning, I'm Kristen Lowe. Right now, Governor Gretchen Whitmer is in Midland with the Lieutenant Governor, as well as elected officials and business leaders. The announced reason for this press conference is an update on COVID-19, but yesterday also marked one year since the floods devastated the area. Let's go live now to Dow Diamond in Midland. Jim Federling, the Dow Chairman and CEO, Matt Pallon, the President of Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance, and Chris Mudhank, the General Manager for the Dow Diamond. We are so happy to be here today. And before I jump in, I just want to thank Dow for the incredible help that they've given the state of Michigan as we have navigated everything from historic flooding to the need to get PPE and develop PPE here in Michigan to their participation with the Michigan Economic Recovery Council and for loaning us a lot of their math geniuses to help us with our modeling. And um, I'm just so grateful that they've been such an incredible partner. So, good afternoon. Today I am going to provide an update on masks and then we will walk through some of the changes to the back to normal plan about building back our economy. To date, Michigan has administered almost 7.9 million doses of the safe, effective COVID-19 vaccines to more than 4.6 million Michiganders ages 16 and up with 57% of our population eligible population receiving at least one dose. Cases and test positivity have declined for five straight weeks. Hospitalizations have declined for three weeks in a row. And our COVID metrics are trending downward in Michigan and of course across the country. This is great news. Over 60% of American adults have gotten their first shots and almost half are fully vaccinated nationwide. So life is getting back to normal. Last Thursday, the CDC released new guidance on masks based on the strength of vaccines in preventing infection and spread among vaccinated people. Now the guidance stated that vaccinated people no longer need to wear masks or socially distance outdoors or indoors, other than in certain medical spaces. We have adjusted our mask policy to match the CDC recommendation. So now in Michigan, fully vaccinated people no longer need to wear a mask outdoors or indoors unless required by their work or business. And our recovery continues to pick up steam. Michigan's unemployment rate is now 4.9%. That's over a full point below the national average. In the past year, unemployment in Michigan has fallen by nearly 80%, and we have added 968,000 jobs over the last year. But we still have work to do. We are still short of where we were before the pandemic, and our economic recovery is going well, but we need to do and continue to do a lot more to invest in our families, small businesses, and communities to help them succeed. So, as with every decision that we've made, Throughout the pandemic, we are leading with science and data to keep you and your family safe. But the way to put this pandemic behind us is for everyone to get their shot. The vaccine is the best way to keep you and your family and the most vulnerable among us safe from COVID-19. Recently, the Pfizer vaccine, manufactured right here in Michigan, was authorized for children ages 12 to 16. Tens of thousands of kids have already gotten their shot to protect themselves from COVID and its variants. And I encourage all parents with kids in that age range to speak to your doctors about this vaccine. While millions of Michiganders have already gotten vaccinated, I know that many people still have questions and, I, and or some just wanna wait it out. I wanna speak to those people and answer some of their questions. First, these vaccines are safe. Over 160 million Americans have taken it. It's been rigorously, rigorously tested and is trusted by doctors. Like other vaccines before it, for polio and smallpox, the vaccine represents hope and healing. And even if you've had COVID, you should still get vaccinated to protect yourself from variants and repeat infection. If you received a monoclonal antibody treatment, 
you should still get your shot, but you need to wait 90 days after the treatment. And if you want to know more, I encourage you to speak with your family doctor and learn how vaccines can save your life and the lives of the people you love. Now, let's talk about some changes to the Back to Normal plan. As you can probably imagine, when the CDC came out last week with new mask guidance, we had to go back to the drawing board. Come on, that's kind of funny. You're not paying attention. All right, we went back to the drawing board. Originally, our plan had four steps, each of which was tied to a percentage of Michiganders receiving their first shot plus two weeks. So the first step started at 55%, and we hit that number pretty quickly. That means that um, we take the step on next Monday of getting people back in workplaces. The following steps would have happened every 5% as our vaccinations grew. On May 10th, when we surpassed that 55%, we now will see MIOSHA take action to allow offices across Michigan to allow in-person work in workplaces. Next Monday, we'll have a lot more detail to share on the MIOSHA rules for COVID-19 workplace safety. Now, based on the new mask guidance, we have two steps to get back to normal. On June 1st, all right, June 1st, all outdoor capacity limits will be lifted, including here at the Dow Diamond, so you can come and cheer on the loons. We will maintain, all right, the Dow Diamond folks are really excited, and I am too. We will maintain our mask rule, as already announced, but otherwise lift all mitigation measures on outdoor gatherings and only retain a 50% capacity limit on indoor establishments. That means that an indoor social gathering, like a wedding or a funeral or a conference or a graduation party, will be allowed to resume at 50% capacity through the month of June. In June, people who are not yet fully vaccinated are required to continue to mask up when they are indoors. MDHHS will officially release the updated order on Monday, so you can check it out then. On July 1, that is when we will take our final step. We will lift the broad mask and gatherings order and will no longer impose broad mitigation measures during the pandemic, unless, of course, unanticipated circumstances arise. We do not expect that to happen. We look at this as the last moment of these, these types of orders. We will be able to sing at church, dance at weddings, cheer at games, hug each other, and laugh together. I know that that is welcome news to so many. We have one more, I'm sorry, we may have one or more targeted orders in, in place to protect vulnerable populations, but for the most part, life will be back to normal and we can have the kind of Independence Day we're all looking forward to. After a year of living with COVID and with masks and distancing and hand washing, I know how jarring any change to our daily lives feels. In this time of transition, I'm asking that people extend one another a little bit of grace. As we return to normal, we should remember that tough times don't last, but tough people do. We've gotten through this pandemic because of each other, because of our fellow Michiganders. As daily routines start to look more normal, we should recognize that everyone processes change at different speeds and in different ways. And so for the next few weeks and possibly months, some Michiganders will feel safer with a mask, even if they've been vaccinated, and that's okay. Other Michiganders who may have been vaccinated are ready to go mask-free, and that's okay too. Either way, there should be no shaming or guilt tripping. Instead, I encourage people to have a conversation with their family doctor about the safe, effective vaccines. Ask your questions and learn more about how incredible they are and how they can help us get back to normal. So personally, since I am two weeks past my second dose, I'm going mask-free because I know it's safe for my family and for me and those around me. We should trust one another to make choices that are best for us. On July 1st, the broad mask rule will be lifted. But I want to be clear about the fact that businesses and workplaces are well within their rights to require masks as patrons go in. So let's give them the, our support as they navigate what's best for them and their workforce and their, their patrons. There will ultimately come a day when masks will be distant memories, maybe in boxes in our basements. But until then, we've got to transition back to normalcy together and give each other some grace. 
Now, as our economic recovery continues, our task is clear. Build back better. Right now, we have an opportunity to make transformative investments in Michigan's fundamentals, in our schools, our small businesses, and our communities. We have over a billion dollars in federal COVID relief funds sent to us by the Trump administration. You heard that right. Last year, they sent it to us, and they're still awaiting action in the legislature. I want to thank Midland Senator, Senator Stamas, and our Probst Chair um, for helping get dollars out the door for Michiganders, and I look forward to continuing our partnership to do just that. We also have billions headed our way under President Biden's American Rescue Plan, which includes $5.7 billion to the state of Michigan, $4.4 billion to local governments, and $3.9 billion to Michigan schools. We need to think big right now. Think outside the box. If we use these resources effectively, we can create thousands of good paying jobs for Michiganders and put us on a path to prosperity that far outlasts our recovery from COVID. In addition to these federal funds, we also have the state budget. And I laid out my budget priorities back in February. My budget proposal focuses on people, projects, and potential. Largest investment in K-12 education in our history without raising taxes. Invest $370 million to lower child care costs, in some cases down to zero for 150,000 Michigan families. Beefs up the Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners. Puts $300 million toward fixing bridges. $290 million in the My Clean Water Plan to build up water infrastructure and create thousands of good paying jobs. So to meet this moment, we have to work together in a civil, bipartisan way. We've got to get these billions in aid out the door for Michiganders now. Our jobs numbers are heading in the right direction, and we still have work to do to get back to our pre-pandemic levels of employment and beyond. I look forward to getting these budgets done and spending these federal dollars in the smartest way to benefit all Michiganders. In the weeks and months ahead, as we emerge from this pandemic, my administration will double down on the kitchen table issues that have guided our agenda from day one a great education for every Michigan child, better paying jobs and path to education and skills, clean air and water, reliable roads and bridges, and much more. I am excited about the opportunity in front of us, and I'll continue to work to make sure we realize our potential. So with that, thank you. I'm gonna hand it over to the Lieutenant Governor, and then we'll go from there, thanks. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon, everyone. I always want to acknowledge and thank Governor Whitmer for her leadership. also want to acknowledge uh, Jim Fitterling of Dow, the mayor, others who have joined us here today for this important announcement about how we're going to move forward together, the pathway to the back end of this pandemic. I'm really thrilled to be here in Midland, here at the Dow Diamond. You know, when we marked the first, when, the one year anniversary, excuse me, of our first COVID cases, we stood in stadiums like this that were empty, addressing the hardships that we have been through as a state. But all of us, even at that moment when we were low, we had hope. Hope that we'd be able to fill stadiums like this one, stadiums like the Breslin Center, stadiums like the Big House to enjoy a musical or a play at the thousands of theater venues across the state of Michigan, or like the Fox Theater in my hometown of Detroit. And of course, enjoy the sports that we love and that connect us across any divides. With every passing day, we move closer to reaching and reclaiming that sense of normalcy that we have all been craving. We must continue to encourage every person in Michigan who's eligible to make the choice to get vaccinated. This is the safest, this is the pathway for us to make sure that we can protect one another in addition to protecting ourselves and that we can enable the opportunity that we know lies before us. In this particular area, I know that we're no stranger to coming together 
because we face unimaginable circumstances here in mid-Michigan. You know, shortly after the flooding that happened in this area, I was able to come out and personally tour where the dams failed. I was inspired to see how quickly the people of Midland and Sanford came together to support one another. I was actually equally inspired by the way that people from every corner of the state of Michigan really stepped up to stand tall for their Michigan neighbors and friends and family and yes, strangers, because they knew that that helping hand was necessary. I've also visited Sanford Park for a cleanup project and toured the M30 bridge that was rebuilt in partnership with community and with the Michigan Department of Transportation. I'm thankful for those employees and team members who worked tirelessly to repair that bridge and do so so quickly, recognizing how critical that is, that infrastructure is, to this community. So many people have opened their doors to friends and family in need of shelter, in need of support. It took everyone coming together after this historic flooding event to start the next chapter. And the people of mid-Michigan have stepped up and begun writing. And that's why one year later, Governor Whitmer and I are here to show not only that we continue to maintain support, but that support is not going anywhere. Now, since the start of the pandemic, the governor and I have been focused on trying to do the right things, on acting quickly, on following the science, on listening to experts. And because of not only governor's leadership, but because people across the state, elected appointed leaders, community leaders, individuals have stepped up, Michigan is on our way to getting back to normal and rebuilding and reimagining our economy. We have so many resources that the state has contributed and committed to supporting not only the survival, but supporting, the, supporting those who are gonna be coming out bigger and better after this pandemic is over. Whether it's programs like our small business resource grants, restart grants, programs to support restaurant owners and workers, programs to support the first responders and the people who've been working all year during this pandemic to make sure that we could continue life and sustain it. We are looking forward to continuing those investments and leveraging every resource so that we can emerge from this pandemic stronger and better connected than ever. We'll leverage all of the resources of state government to rebuild this economy back better, harnessing every economic tool at our disposal and working with leaders in government, leaders in the private sector and beyond to create an environment where entrepreneurs, where people with ideas, no matter where they live in Michigan, can bring those ideas forward into reality to create good paying jobs and opportunities for all Michiganders. Just yesterday, we saw how Michigan's economy is moving forward as our unemployment rate is lower than the national average. We've added jobs for three consecutive months. 968,000 jobs have been added over the past year. That is real progress. Progress toward getting Michiganders and our economy back to normal. The governor and I will remain focused on economic recovery, resilience, and most of all, opportunity for all. But one of the most important steps, which we cannot reiterate enough, is making the choice to get vaccinated. Since I last spoke with the press corps, I've had a chance to receive my second dose in Flint, Michigan. Proud now to be counted amongst the people who have gotten both shots. This is our best shot to be free from this pandemic and the quickest way to getting our country and our communities back to where we want them to be, where we can hug one another, we can get back to work, we can go to restaurants, we can send our kids to school to play sports without the thought and the fears that we've all had to live with. But even now, there are still conversations to be had with people who have questions. Those questions are okay. And those questions have answers. It's important to recognize that we all have the power to encourage someone to make that choice. And that every person in Michigan who has not yet chosen to get vaccinated is just one conversation away. That's why we formed the Protect Michigan Commission to connect people with the information and resources from credible sources that they could trust, from community resources that people have relationships with and have had so for generations. 
to use that credibility to demonstrate the credibility of the vaccine. And this effort has required the biggest, broadest coalition of leaders for anything we faced in Michigan. It's the largest and most diverse commission that we've appointed, and it's working as people are choosing to get vaccinated every single day. So I want to challenge Michiganders, who, especially those who have already gotten at least one vaccine dose, to talk about your experience, to let people know whether you had questions, whether it took a little convincing to get you to that decision point. That the vaccine sites that I've toured, speaking with nurses who've come out of retirement to help this effort, they talk about calming and comforting people as they sit down to get their vaccine dose. Those nurses are public servants. They are heroes and miracle workers because they are helping people get back to normal. So I want you to make sure that you're using every resource you have, that you send a text message to someone today, that you send a Facebook message to someone today, that you have a conversation on the phone or in person with someone today, because we all know people who may not have yet made that choice. But if we make every effort, we can get to and beyond having 70% of people in Michigan vaccinated. We can see the finish line coming into focus, and now we got to give it everything we have. This is essential, and it's the most important choice that people in Michigan can make right now. Along with our partners in the federal government, Governor Whitmer and I have committed to making sure that we can grow our economy back stronger and better. We're going to use everything at our disposal to make that happen. This has shown us in this pandemic that Michiganders really can do anything. We are capable of any and everything when we come together and work together to do extraordinary things. We've seen that spirit here in Midland. In a matter of hours, this community came together to start recovering from a once in 500 year flood, to mobilize and evacuate to safety tens of thousands of people with not a single casualty. That is the embodiment of hope, determination, and grit. That is in the DNA of every person who calls Michigan home. So I hope that every person who's watching from around the state can channel that energy that is so present and is represented by these people and these leaders in this part of our state today. So thank you all for, for having me today. Thank you all for really, truly standing tall for one another and standing tall for the state of Michigan. And let's remember to reach out to one another, to take care of one another, to be there for one another. Let's make sure every Michigander knows that every other Michigander has their back. And now it's my honor to turn the podium here over to uh, the mayor of this great city. Hello. I think our Lieutenant Governor just did a wonderful job telling our story. And I wanted to take this opportunity, to, though, to thank our governor and her team for coming here today to check on us. A year after we went into this catastrophic disaster. And I also want to say thank you for being there for us a year ago as we were trying to figure out how we were going to respond to this. I think what you see is a wonderful example of the grit that we have as a community. We have come a long way in that last year. This is a wonderful example of neighbor helping neighbor, of family, friends, and yes, as the Lieutenant Governor said, even strangers coming from across the state in our country to help us. For us, you know, we feel that we truly are the kind of community that everyone would want to live in. And I have to say, after seeing the response that we got, from our state and country, it was really very humbling for us to see how we help one another as a state and as a country. We've come a long way in this year, and we have a long way yet to go. But hearing that we're going to be opening up even more is so important to us as we go through this recovery. We are looking forward to moving forward, but it's going to take us some time. But I know that we can do it. And seeing I have this opportunity, I just need to say to my fellow citizens of Midland County how proud I am of all of you 
and I hope that you are proud also of what you have accomplished in this past year. My thanks to all of you, and it is incredibly humbling to serve you as your mayor. So now it is my opportunity to introduce to you Jim Fitterling, our wonderful president and CEO of Dow, and one of the organizations that was incredibly important in this recovery effort. Jim? Good day, everyone. Governor Whitmer, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, thank you again for coming to Midland today, and I should say many times uh, over this past year. And thanks for participating in the Pulling Our Weight cleanup event in Sanford this morning. I think it was a very a great way for you to connect with the community. This community has endured a lot, and it has come a long way, but as you saw, we still have a lot of work to do. One year ago, you and I were in Lansing, and uh, Dow introduced a return to the workplace playbook to allow employers to be able to go to work safely. And here we are a year later, and we're getting ready to open wide up in the state of Michigan. That night when I drove back, it was a heavy rainstorm, and the dams breached the next day. We would see each other again at the end of the week when you came up. And I remember in your press briefing then, you struck a very optimistic tone that this is a strong community and we get through it together. In times of crisis, the spirit of community comes through, and it did across all five of these counties that were impacted. And as you saw while touring Sanford this morning, that's exactly what is happening. A special thanks to the thousands of volunteers all over these five counties, to all the Dow employees and retirees who were part of that effort, who continue to give selflessly to help the communities and families affected by the floods, to all the foundations, to all the civic organizations, and to people, volunteers from all over the state of Michigan that came up here to help people in need clean out their basements, get wet furniture out, and get things ready to be cleaned up and start their lives again. Your announcement today about opening up the state is a big step toward reclaiming part of our lives that many of us took for granted prior to the pandemic. And it's time. It's time for us to get on with life. Here in the Great Lakes Bay region, we're excited to have the Great Lakes loons back in action at Dow Diamond this summer, something that didn't happen last year. And we're looking forward to welcoming fans back in July for the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. And I want to thank your team for working with us and all of the other LPGA and PGA sponsors across the state to help us come up with a way to bring fans back to those events. This is also welcome news for many of the businesses that have struggled over the past year with restricted hours or closures. They've been on the front lines battling COVID, and they've made sacrifices for the community that should not be overlooked or forgotten. We are all optimistic about a world with fewer COVID restrictions, but we all need to do our part. And as Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist uh, so eloquently said, we are blessed to have access to life-saving vaccines in this country, and the United States is leading the way in vaccination. You can be vaccinated today across the state of Michigan because these vaccines are available now and they are safe and they are effective. I would encourage you to get the vaccine like I did. It'll be the best thing you can do for yourself, your friends, your family, and the state of Michigan. A team of Dow supply chain experts has worked with the state for the past several months to make sure that they could help get the data and the modeling they need to make critical decisions to do things like get those vaccines distributed all over this great state. We're very fortunate to have a strong community here and have community leaders with us who have led every step of the way so that we can get to this point. We're all committed to working with the governor, our policymakers, and our local businesses to come out of this stronger, and we have a path forward to build back these dams and get back to everything being normal in this region again. So, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you again for being in the Great Lakes Bay region. Thank you for being in Midland. You're welcome here anytime. And I'd like to bring Matt Fallon, the President and CEO of the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance. Matt. Good afternoon, everyone. Great for you to be out here today. I too would like to recognize the governor and lieutenant governor who have been frequent visitors 
here to the Great Lakes Bay region, and specifically to Midland and Sanford, following what has been an epically difficult year. Today, I just wanted to recognize people across the Great Lakes Bay region who have heeded the guidance and advice of the Whitmer administration to get vaccinated. When I was driving over here, I wanted to get the latest numbers to really get a good idea of what our region is doing. And as of this morning, 59% of adults in Midland County have received their first vaccine. 56% of adults in Bay County, 51% of adults in Saginaw County, and 48% of adults in Isabella County. This is about the people in the Great Lakes Bay region and across the state of Michigan taking matters into their own hand. I would really like to thank our citizens across this region who have said we want to defeat COVID and get a return to normalcy. It's through their willingness and their desire to put this behind us that they've gotten this vaccine and put us in a wonderful position to have a full ballpark again on June 1st. I share the message of the fellow leaders today and that we still have more work to do. What's great is these numbers are only going to continue to rise over the course of the next several months. I'll be honest, it's a surreal feeling to be up here maskless, to hear that in just a few weeks this stadium will be packed, and to understand that by July 1st, we can all return to the normalcy that we once had. I'll say the other part about people across this region is that they are ready to return to their normal lives. There's so many things that they want to do, and number one is get back to work, get back to their offices, get back to producing. We as a region and a state have a tremendous opportunity to grow our economy, but it only happens if we go back to work. And I have the pleasure of wearing multiple hats, and one of those hats is a school board member. And I can tell you it's been an extraordinarily challenging past year for students across the Great Lakes Bay region and the state. They are eager to learn. They are eager to get back to normal. And hopefully through the work that we all do in increasing vaccinations through the course of the next several months, we're going to go into a school year where our kids can get the type of education that they so badly deserve and need. So again, I want to thank the Governor and Lieutenant Governor for being here today, for their leadership on this issue, and for putting us really in the right direction as we head into the summer months. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the guy's home that we're in, uh, the new president and general manager of the Great Lakes Looms, Chris Munhank. Thank you, Matt. On behalf of the entire Looms organization, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Major League and Minor League Baseball, welcome to beautiful Dow Diamond. We're thrilled to share this extraordinary day with you all, and a day that's not just extraordinary for the loons and our incredible fans, but every outdoor entertainment venue in the great state of Michigan. 429 days ago, on March 16, 2020, our community stepped into the batter's box and encountered an opponent we had never seen before and one that we thought could only exist in textbooks. The COVID pandemic forced us to make tough decisions and put our lives on hold so we could keep our friends, our families, our colleagues, and even strangers safe from an opponent that we could not see. We traded bleachers for couches, catcher's masks for face masks, and live sports and entertainment for binge-watching TV. From Sherman Field in Houghton to Comerica Park in Detroit, from LMCU Ballpark in Grand Rapids to Dow Diamond here in Midland, sports fans from all across our state put their fandom and rivalries aside and came together as one team, Team Michigan. And today, we have won the game. The list of people to thank for getting us to this moment is long, but every single one of you deserves our sincerest thanks and gratitude for your leadership, dedication, and perseverance over the past 14 months. To Gover Governor Whitmer and her team, thank you for your leadership, 
poise, and professionalism through every tough decision made to keep Michiganders safe. To sports fans all across the state, thank you for supporting your hometown teams, even when you could not attend a game. Your unwavering support during this challenging time has helped ensure the field lights stay on and your teams remain a pillar in your community. Our sports, fans, our sports teams are so excited to be welcoming back full crowds to our facilities once again. For our players to once again hear the roar of the crowd and for our staffs to rekindle valued friendships with our fans. To my fellow Michiganders, thank you for doing your part to keep each other safe. When asked, you stayed at home you masked up, you got vaccinated. And now we can come together once again. Lastly, the greatest thanks to our frontline and service uh, essential workers, to the healthcare workers in our hospitals, the grocery store workers that kept our shelves stocked around the clock, the teachers who never gave up on educating our children, and everyone in between we will forever be indebted to you. Your bravery and sacrifices are the reason we are all here today. I could not be prouder to call the great state of Michigan home. We are Michiganders. We are resilient. We are back. And together, we are going to be better than ever. Thank you. And at this time, in honor of this moment, an important moment for us as well as all the other sports teams throughout the state, we'd like to offer our gratitude and see your thanks to our governor and lieutenant governor and present each of you with a Loon's jersey. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you. I um, am so grateful for all of the participants today and the incredible uh, work that is happening in Sanford to go and help a little bit of the cleanup and to take a tour with um, Dolores in Sanford and, and walk through the town. It's, and with Jim, I mean, it's just really heartwarming to see how a community can come together after all these crises that converge. So. Um, it's always inspirational to come to this part of the state. So let's jump in. Eric, I'm going to call on you first because you laughed at my joke earlier. Well, I'm hopeful that we get to 70%. You know, the more people they get vaccinated, the better for all of our sake, and here's why. When this virus continues to spread, it can mutate. And at some point, maybe there'll be a mutation that our vaccines aren't as good against. And that's why getting more people vaccinated is good for everyone. So our efforts to do that are, are, are not stopping. Uh, in fact, we are doing more mobile units than ever, getting to people where they are. But we also know that the, Dow, the brilliant Dow modelers told us that about this time we would see uh, supply eclipse demand and it would slow down. And in fact, that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's why getting people's questions answered, meeting people where they are. These are critical components to us increasing the number of people that get vaccinated. I also want to um, encourage people who are not vaccinated. I mean, the, the rule is if you're indoors, you need to wear your mask. That falls away July 1st. It is still going to be the smartest policy to stay safe if you are someone who is not vaccinated to mask up when you're indoors, especially with people from outside your household. Um, we're hoping that we will get to 70 percent. We've got a lot of partners, whether it's health systems or employers who are working with us to do just that. But at this point, we know the CDC kind of changed the landscape. It was a little bit of a surprise. Good news, to be sure, but we had to recalibrate our plan, and that's what I think you see. 
Now, I've gotten a lot of calls from people who say, can we have a million dollar raffle like they're doing in Ohio? Trust me, I've heard a lot of people are interested in that. Michigan law precludes us from doing that, but we are investigating if there are additional ways that we can encourage people to get vaccinated. But the most powerful reason is because it'll keep you safe, it'll keep your loved ones safe, and it'll help us all have confidence as we're out in the public. Yes. So the curfews are dropped as well. Um, what we know is that when the CDC came out with this new rule, they have confidence that the science bears out that if you are vaccinated, you are safe to go without a mask in all places. That is great news. It also was confusing to a lot of people, and that's why we wanted to make sure that our policies mirrored the CDC's recommendations and that we gave people clarity. So June 1, and then July 1, those are the two steps. We've collapsed the VAC to normal because it just became very clear that it was important for us to give people um, sure dates and, and um, confidence that we can be safe doing this. And so that's why we've, we've reconfigured the, the plan. Yes? Yes and yes. All right. Governor, yes. Um, my question is, so looking at the idea that you can, any, no one has to wear a mask come July 1st. It kind of gives the impression that we're all pretty safe come that time. You said you'll say everyone knows you're safe, but if you do wear a mask, but what does it say to businesses, especially that want to check vaccine cards and people that, I mean, do you have any comments on that? So first, I think it's important to acknowledge the safest thing you can do is get vaccinated. And then you can enjoy all of these things that we've all been just so eager to re-engage. Second, if you are unvaccinated, you choose not to get vaccinated or you're unable to get vaccinated for some medical reason, we're gonna strongly encourage people to continue to mask up, especially when they are indoors with people outside their household. But that's gonna be encouragement. That will not be through some sort of an order that comes from the state. Remind me the second part of your question. Uh, do any comment on businesses that decide they want Oh, yes. To well, we want to make sure, you know, part of our, our call is to extend some grace to one another and to respect businesses who decide that they want to continue to have some uh, form of mask requirement. Some businesses may have an employee who's going through chemotherapy and is immune compromised, and they want their customers to make sure that they're masked up so that that employee is safe. We need to extend the grace and show some respect to these businesses and ask that everyone do exactly that and, and follow the, um, the needs and the lead of individual business rules. They still are within their right to do exactly that. Yeah, Rick. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm on a roll. Rick, go ahead. I mean, the CDC change was based on their most recent understanding of the science. And so when they promulgated that, it wasn't just confusing for Michiganders. I've talked to enough of my colleagues across the country on both sides of the aisle, and everyone had to move quickly to give some clarity and to make the state rules um, sing with, you know, sing on the same page with the, with the CDC guidelines. That's precisely what we're doing. Now, the CDC has driven a lot of our policies over the course of the last year and a half. They are the ones who are conversant in all of the studies. Certainly, Dr. Caldoun and our incredible experts here in Michigan have been a part of that conversation as well. But we've, we've been following the CDC in large part. Um, when they came up with this new policy recommendation, we wanted to make sure that the people of Michigan had clarity. But to be certain, the best way to stay safe is to be vaccinated, and that it continues to be the case. All right, I'm going to do one more. I know you're trying to cut me off. Yes. Uh, there's a legislative proposal to require the governor to alert the legislature if they travel outside of the state. What are your thoughts? 
I think that that's um, gamesmanship, it's not productive, and it is probably not constitutional as well. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Did Thanks you for coming up. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you both did a great job.